Hi, I'm Jason Miles, and this is my wife, Francine. We own Two Burks Incorporated here in Riverside, California. I want to take you for a tour in our shop. First, I want to introduce you to Israel. He is our main shop manager and in charge of all sales also. He keeps it, everything going around here. So this is my office. I share an office with my uh, engineer, Justin. Uh, this is where we do all the CAD modeling and he does all the programming for the machines out there. So a lot of time is spent in this room. <laughs> so we specialize in designing our own drivetrain components. Uh, these components are very high demand, as I said before, rated for over a thousand horsepower. So we manufacture completely fabricated rear end assemblies, sheet metal housings that are heat treated, TIG welded. Uh, we actually make our own uh, uh, gear reduction units. It's a planetary based unit that's quick change that we have well over a thousand horsepower running through those in about 90% of the off-road trucks out there. Uh, we also manufacture our own gear carriers as far as like a third member, uh, it's four nine inch or 10 inch base platform, uh, completely different concept than anything else out there. So our customer base includes a majority of the off-road top trophy truck teams, ultra four teams, which are a, a high speed four wheel drive, rock crawling, desert racing class vehicle, uh, short course trucks, majority of the professional short course in the Pro 2 and Pro 4 uh, classes, uh, Pro Light classes. First of our four machines, it's a Mazak 18MS turning center. Uh, it has some live tooling on it so we can do some simple parts on it. Not real complex, but it gets the job done. We make simple discs. Uh, we actually manufacture gears on it. We send these out for hobbing. Uh, we do hard turning on it after heat treatment. So picking up surfaces like that. That's kind of our, our simplest of every piece of equipment we have here. All right, so I'm gonna show you our first Integrex. This is a Mazak Integrex I200S. It's a mill turn machine. So it's basically a lathe and a mill in one. Uh, it's very capable, it has 30 horsepower on each of the spindles. The live tool in the center also is a 30 horsepower motor. Uh, it's capable of 12,000 RPM. So on this machine, we're making these billet yokes. This is a completed part that's been heat treated and, and broached or splined. So it starts with the raw material on the first side. The head comes in, changes the tool, does all the turning operations, bores it, does some milling operations. The second sub spindle comes across, grabs it, this releases it and moves it to the second side of the machine. Again, the head goes in, grabs turning tools, milling tools, and completes the entire part on the second side. Now the part is done, it has to be deburred and broached and ready for post-processing. Uh, this is our second Integrex, uh, it's a 200 3T. It's a little bit older compared to the I-Series, but it's still a very capable, capable machine. We're making flange uh, nuts for some of our products. This is made from preheat treated material. This machine is also a seven axis, but it does not have a sub spindle. It has a tail stock, but it does have a lower turret. Uh, this machine was also not outfitted with a parts catcher. We're actually designing our own parts catcher to add to the automation here. Uh, the spindle at the top is the B axis head. It's capable of 12,000 RPM. Uh, the primary turning spindle uh, is 5,000 RPM and is about 30 horsepower. So we, we manufacture a lot of complicated parts on this machine. Uh, here's a couple examples of some of the parts that came, came from. This is the hub that we're able to make and, and two operations on this. So it's turned and milled. Uh, very, very good part example for what the Integrex is capable of. I'll show you our last and final Integrex. This is our largest machine. 
This is an Intergrex 300 Mark IV, uh, has a sub spindle. So here we're manufacturing our own uh, third member. It's a, a gear carrier for racing vehicles. So here we start with raw material. This is a 12 inch diameter chunk of material. It's approximately 75 pounds. Does all the first operations over here, turning operations, milling operations. The second sub spindle will come over and pick up the first operation, move it to the second side of the machine, and it'll finish off the part in the second sub spindle. So again, this part is made in one operation. The Mazaks are known for a done in one type operation, and this is a perfect example of it. Here's a completed part that's already been post processed, it's been plated. Same type, exact same part that we're making here. So you can see the level of, of machine work on this. The tool paths are, are very precise. Uh, this is a seven axis. So this is, this is a really nice machine that we're now finally starting to use all the capabilities of. With this part, we just started using uh, T, Esprit TNG. It's a, a CAM software package. So now we're utilizing full 3D models and converting that directly into tool paths. Uh, that's a new transition for our business. Before, over the last 15 years, we've been hand keying all the, all the programs on the Mazatrol uh, conversational program that's built into these machines. So now we're finally exploring 3D surfacing, uh, spiral finishing, uh, hobbying features, things that we were never, never able to do on the Mazatrol side which now we're starting to get into that. Uh, it's really helping our manufacturing uh, potential, the comp level of complexity in the parts, and just the efficiency of the throughput for the machine shop. I'll show you a few more parts I have set up that we used to um, basically key in on all these machines. This is using the Mazatrol software, again, that comes factory on every one of the Mazak machines. So we've done some pretty complicated items, really kind of pushing the envelope for what you can do with Mazatrol. So all of these parts on here, we hand keyed in. This is a locking differential that we manufacture. So all of this, this is a perfect example of what can be done on a mill turn. Mill turns are great for handling round material and doing complex mill work on them, drilling holes, boring features. Uh, and, and holding good concentricity or perfect concentricity because the part never leaves a spindle. This, is, this was also done on one of our last Intergrex, is a very old machine, but this doesn't seem like it would be built on a mill turn, but this was. This is one of the first most complex parts we've done. This is a, a gear carrier for a planetary drive system we built. It's another great part, part you can see from a mill turn. You can see the turning uh, finishes on this, concentric with this, but this part's off center. So we actually spun this off center to machine this product. And you can see the little mill pass in here for the nuts to go into, transfers over, and then we also have more finishing that's off center. A great example again for what a mill turn is capable of. Uh, here's a planetary gear carrier that we manufacture for some of our planetary underdrives. So this again is made in two operations, actually a third. We, we finish the whole bores after heat treatment and plating, but all of these pockets and these bores and turnings done in one operation on one side. So we're able to maintain critical tolerances, concentricity on, on critical items, and then work on the backside. Holes are drilled at an angle. So we, we're using the, the fifth axis capacity of the machine to, to punch holes in angles where a conventional turning server would want to drill straight or vertical. This, this can vary its drill pattern in any angle. Another semi-complex part. Uh, this is a planetary uh, housing end. It goes for one of our planetary rear ends we built years, of go years ago. An, an aluminum planet carrier that actually outfits inside of that. And this was, we made this probably six or seven years ago. So this is, a, this is a fairly complex part to do on the Mazatrol software. Again, we, like I said, we're really pushing the envelope of that. The Intergrexes are great for splining shafts, doing shaft work. So 
This is one of the large trophy truck axles we manufacture. So we're able to turn the part, spline the part in one operation. So this spline is 100% concentric to the shaft. It never left the spindle. Here's a double spline shaft that we do. This has been heat treated. So you can see the splining can be phased. We have oil ports that can be drilled and intersected, threaded. We can phase mill patterns in with spline so we can keep a consistent orientation of a spline to a certain feature on the product. Some transmission shafts that we do, same type thing. We're able to mill and turn all these parts and two operations on this, same thing. This is a two operation part, splined on each end. Splines can be phased if necessary. A really good example of, of a mill turn again. Even odd shapes we've been able to tackle like this. Uh, this was 100% done in the milling function on the machine. So we're able to fixture a piece of plate onto one of the chucks, mill it, part transfer it, grab the opposite side, finish the opposite side, again, in only one operation. I'm gonna show you our sawing center. We have a Casto Racine uh, automatic saw. Uh, this machine handles up to 14 inch, actually 14 and a half inch diameter bar stock. We saw aluminum, multiple alloy steels with it. It's a fantastic saw. The whole head of this is actually a concrete epoxy hybrid. So it, there's very little vibration in it. It makes extremely accurate and smooth cuts. Uh, it automatically feeds from the back. We sawed our third member blanks up in that. That's 12 inch material at about 75 pounds a piece. It'll easily process a bar of that within a couple hours. Um, you can see we have a piece of tubing in here now. Uh, this will be chopped up Monday morning. Material typically comes from our storage racks here or comes in directly from our material providers. Uh, so we do all the sawing in house. It's a great feature to have at our shop. Well, here's all our staff that's hiding in this room. There's Curtis, he's our parts runner, and they're also one of our uh, new welders that are building the uh, trophy truck housings along with Tyler. Uh, and Brett, he's our lead technician. He's responsible for all gear builds and basically any technical assemblies we have to do. Uh, this is part of our fabrication area. You can see we have a bandsaw, some grinding equipment, we're known for our rear end product line. This is one of the fabricated rear end housings that we built. It's completely hand built, all TIG welded, made from air, uh, aircraft grade chromoly steel and all heat treated. We have an air conditioned welding room for our welders that work in there. Uh, we're not gonna show you the inside of that just because we have some proprietary equipment in there to maintain straightness on these assemblies that we perfected over the last 15 years. All of our rear end assemblies are built on fixture tables or CAD modeled. So here's one going together here. Some of the printouts from Justin for the location, the fixtures, the tabs, all the tabs are laser cut. Uh, they have to be cleaned up and prepared to be welded on. So there's still quite a bit of work. It's not just something that gets slapped together. So there's many, many hours of, of build time in, in one of these units. 